about keeping farm animals in the big city. A lot of cities have different rules about what kind of animals you can keep in the city. Chickens, goats, ducks, pigs, bees. It's all regulated. And if you're thinking about getting an animal, I would check that first. After I checked regulations, I would go ahead and walk around my area that I wanted to keep the animals that I chose. Of course, after a lot of research, making sure that those animals would suit my lifestyle and I'd be able to have enough time to give them a good quality of life because that is very important. Sometimes we jump into things and then we realize, uh-oh, I can't handle having this animal. And then pretty soon you have invested all this time and money in these animals and you realize it's not working for you <laughs> and the animals get attached to you and you get attached to them a little bit and it doesn't work out you're trying to find them a new home and it all just turns into the big complicated mess so do your research before, <laughs> before you choose an animal that you want to keep on your farm and then once you choose that animal you want to make sure that you have enough space and enough time to dedicate to that animal. <laughs> keeping farm animals is a lot different than just keeping a dog or a cat. I mean, even though dogs and cats require a lot of attention, farm animals require attention whether it is raining or snowing or heat or cold. You still have to make sure that you're gonna get down to closure that you have your animals on to make sure that they have everything they need. They're completely dependent on you. Now, once you've decided that you have enough space to keep your farm animals, you have to consider space for their needs, space for their food. Now, the goats require a lot of space because, not because of their size, but because of their hay needs. Our garage is always messy. There's always hay on the ground. There's always things scattered around because we take care of our animals. We have to have their supplies. We have to have their hay, and not just one bale of hay, but we have to keep enough bale for a whole season. Beekeeping supplies, medical supplies, supplies for farm visits, animal food. We do not keep trash in this, we keep our food in this. So we have all of our animal food in these trash cans. Speaking of animal food, we also have to travel very far to get our food for our animals. We have to travel about 45 minutes to get our chicken feed, and we have to travel about an hour to get the hay for the goats. So that's another consideration when you're thinking about getting farm animals. How accessible is their food? And are you willing and able to go get the food if you have to travel a little? Another thing to think about when you're thinking about getting animals, that's a lot of thinking, isn't it? Anyway, is the animal waste. Animals do have waste. And the goats, the chickens, and the ducks, they all have waste products. And what do you do with it all? Well, here on the little farm, we compost. We compost it two different ways. We compost it in the barnyard and we have a compost pile by the driveway. This might just look like a big pile of leftover material from the barn, but what it actually is doing, it's composting. We pile it all up together and the chickens scratch it around and underneath this beautiful soil and compost. Look at that. We can use it in our garden, in flower pots, planting any kind of thing that you want to plant. 
and our chickens do all the work. And this is our other compost pile. It's a big one. And this is where we put our kitchen scraps. And I'm adding some of the compost from the barnyard to help it along. On the little farm, I have a lot of flowers and vegetables and vines and trees and bushes, all these beautiful things growing. When you get farm animals, they can do a lot of damage. Now, the goats love bushes and trees. There's certain kind of flowers that they like to eat. And if I were to let them loose in the yard all the time, they would totally decimate that. The ducks do very little damage, but they like to eat my hostas. And the chickens, well, if I let them loose in the garden, there's been many an onion patch that they've ruined. So you have to consider that as well when you're thinking about animals. Think about your space and how you would cohabitate and whether it would be a wonderful cohabitation or something that would be aggravating and frustrating to you because your quality of life is of utmost importance because if you're not happy, nobody's happy. When you're thinking about getting farm animals, you need to think about their shelter. What kind of shelter do they require? How big of a shelter will they require? Do you have space for that? Do you have the ability to build it yourself? Or do you have access to someone who can do it for you? Those are a lot of things to consider when you're thinking about getting farm animals in the city. One very important, crucial key element, water. Access to water. Is it convenient? Can you work something out? Right now, we have an extra long hose to bring water down to the barnyard, and it works pretty good during the summertime. But during the wintertime, I have to carry buckets of water down from the house into the, into the paddocks. So that's a lot of work. Keeping farm animals can lead to pests, not just the kind that fly around. We use a fly tape for those, but pests like mice and rats and raccoons the kind of pests that can do a lot of damage and carry disease. There are a lot of preventative things that you can do for that. Here on the little farm, we make sure the paddocks are nice and clean, we put the food away, we keep it in containers. We also make sure that our compost is turned on a regular basis so that it's not attractive to those animals. When you think about farm animals, you need to think about fencing as well. It helps keep your animals safe, and out of trouble. This might sound a little odd to you when we're talking about getting animals, but I think equipment is also very important to consider. And when I'm talking about equipment, I'm not talking about a big front loader like Farmer Jamie has. I'm talking about the equipment that you'll need. You'll need some rakes and some shovels, and you're gonna need some buckets and all sorts of things. But one of the most important thing on a day-to-day -day basis that you're gonna need is adequate footwear. Now, I started out the little farm with a pair of Crocs, which was fantastic. They're waterproof and you can wash them easily. But, the problem with these Crocs is they have a lot of holes and my feet were constantly getting wet. So I researched and researched and I found these boots. Now, this video is not sponsored by anybody. I'm just telling you my experience. These boots are made by Boggs. They're winter boots. They're children's boots because my feet are so small. It's hard to find shoes that fit. These fit me just very good. I love these boots. These survived winter very well. Look, they're all, they almost look brand new and I wore them every day, all day while I was outside taking care of the animals. Now, they're a little bit pricey. That's true. But it's going to pay off in the end because instead of continually buying more and more boots, trying different brands that survive. I've invested in a pair of boots that are gonna survive several years of working on the little farm. Of course, these are my winter boots. I wanted to find some boots for spring. So again, the search continued. And I like these boots, so I've searched this brand for a long time, but I couldn't find anything that I felt were durable enough because I did try the hunter boots they kept cracking right here. They just, they were great rain boots. They kept my feet dry, 
but they just weren't durable enough. I don't get in trouble for saying that. Anyway, I found these boots, and these are from Happy People. A little, again, a little bit pricey, but these were almost the equivalent to my snow boots, except that these were a little bit cooler because they were ankle boots and they were rain boots. But they're very durable, and I love them. They were a good replacement for my snow boots. So if you want to have animals, you need something that's washable and durable, something that you can slip easily on and off at the door because you don't want to drag all of this stuff into your house. Not really. <laughs> I just felt like that was something that a lot of people don't talk about and I wanted to talk to you about it. You're so cute. You would think in the city that there aren't very many predators, but there are. There are all kinds of predators in the city. So we make sure that our animals are enclosed at night. We make sure that we put them away and we close them in. Let's see. Let's do this. We close them in every night. During the summer months, we have airflow going through, and in the winter, we have a solid door. And that's to protect them from other animals. Believe it or not, in a city of this size, we still have coyote sightings. We've seen fox out here. We've seen all kinds of raccoons like crazy. So we want to make sure that our animals are safe. We make sure they get enclosed every night. Spiders. If you have a barn, you're going to have spiders. And if you don't like spiders or bugs or slimy things, maybe having a farm animal is not for you. I personally don't care, but when I have guests on the little farm, the spiders get a little bit thick and I want everyone to feel comfortable. We don't have any male animals on our farm. All of our animals are girls. Boy goats can be very stinky. Roosters can be very aggressive, and we weren't really sure about ducks, so we didn't want to get more than we could handle. It was a personal preference, but sometimes I think I would like to have male animals just because I would like to grow my own animals once the chickens pass away. We've had two chickens pass away recently, and I'd like to replace them, and it would be nice if I could just um, kind of sort of grow my own and chickens and ducks but maybe in time I'm just not happy or I'm just not comfortable with exposing my neighbors to a rooster crowing in the morning I'm not comfortable exposing myself to a very smelly male goat which male goats are very stinky and uh, baby goats and all that that entails and and the security of knowing that your egg is not fertilized it just kind of lessens a little bit of the stress in the morning when you're breaking open eggs. <laughs> so anyway, there are no male animal there are no males on the farm. Except for the males in the house, Mr. Steve and the dogs. I hope I helped you make some decisions on whether or not you want farm animals or not. <laughs> we sure enjoy our animals here on the little farm. And we really enjoy you visiting. Thank you for visiting Miss Annette's Little Farm in the big city. Now, take a break and get outside today. And we'll see you next time. Bye!